after we found out that we didn't get in, it was that, I guess, trying to work out what, the, what that next step is. Yeah, it was only over the, the sort of weeks following the announcement that we really started to realise how much we'd lost, really. Hello? How are you? She told me, you know, I've got some news, something's changed and, and you're in She Starts. Um, I don't know what to say, sorry, I'm really okay. speechless, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything. We heard what we wanted, but how do we pull it together? It starts in 10 days. We get to welcome some pretty amazing people into the cohort who have had a bit of a surprise when they've had a phone call from me to say, hey, you know that thing called She Starts? Well, you're in. So can everyone please make Sally and Jess feel so welcome? I guess that's just the nature of startups, really. You think you're kind of on one road and then like a two second phone call and then another door opens. <laughs> Close your eyes, if you wouldn't mind. And don't fall asleep. <laughs> Take yourself back to when you clicked on a button and hit apply. Bring that moment forward to where you're sitting right here. This is the opportunity to build a company that will change your lives and the lives of others. Take a look around you. I want to give this everything I can because I believe in farm pay and I believe that it is going to make a real difference. This is something that you know, I want my family's 110% behind me as well, so we're going to give it everything we can. The She Starts program is like our normal accelerator program, but on steroids. So not only are we taking them through a really intense curriculum, we're sharing insights to learn from those who have gone before. In terms of what I sort of wish I knew, the biggest thing I learned out as a founder... It's like a seven to ten year journey. It's not something that you do for one or two years. So it really is a marathon, not a sprint. So you need to get very clear about what your purpose is and your mission, and then what activities you need to do every day to make sure you are working towards that goal within a certain period of time, be financially healthy and on track for like future financial independence and security. That's, that's like the goal. And I think if I can do that, then the business success and its viability is um, to like bring in revenue and that, that will, I'll figure that out. <laughs> I think it'll be eye opening to know how much they're going to have to stretch themselves. That's the reality and there's things that you miss out on at home because you're here and then there's things that you miss out on here because you've got to be home and it, and it sucks but it's just life and you know, you've got to be grateful for what you can be present for, right? And just uh, not dwell on it. Building a startup is an incredibly challenging thing to begin with. But the one thing that doesn't change is the sacrifices you make, the challenges that you face, the hurdles. It is not an easy thing to do. You know, I'm committed to being away from home on a fortnightly basis. So it's, you know, talking the kids through that and getting them to as much as possible as you can for a four, six and eight year old to understand why I'm away. So this morning, my little boy, Max, who's four, had his first day at preschool, and my mum has sent through some photos. So you do miss things like that, which, you know, is a little bit, it's a little bit sad. But look, the kids do as much as possible understand, you know, what I'm doing, and you just have to make sure the time that you are at home is quality time. It involves some hard work. Often when my children go to bed, I'll log on and you know respond to emails and do some work. So it's just about trying to find balance. I'm an overcommitter and when I do that I just you know work till two in the morning and get up and do it again. I just want to do everything at once and I understand why others are saying that doesn't look like a great idea. There's a particular outcome I want at the end of this, which might not be what happens. My sister has recently moved to Melbourne and I haven't been to her house and I don't know if I have time to go to her housewarming this Saturday night. 
another friend said to me, how are you being so selfish? How do you not know where your sister lives? And not realise what I'm actually sacrificing. And so I need to be reality checking that and call her today and apologise and ask her to invite me over um, and tell me the address. Friends? I don't remember if I have any friends. <laughs> That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I've fought so hard for it now, I better be ready. I'm really excited by the opportunity, you know, and trying, like I love jumping in the deep end and not knowing what's gonna happen. You know, usually it does just work out and it's not easy, but I'm excited about that. I think you can't go into any business or any startup without being 100% behind it because you need that passion and the drive behind you and, and the belief in your startup. It's just dawned on me the irony of it I just said to you. I left my original job in academia and here I am like <laughs> totally throwing caution to the wind and going all in. Where one of the biggest things I wanted was stability and now I don't know I've thrown myself into something which is completely unstable. but it's just, it's hard, it's really hard. It is very difficult to have a job and a business and a family. It is quite hard mentally balancing PhDs and our startup. As long as we communicate to each other, I think we'll make it. You know, not I think, we will make it.